Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try to contain myself fresh baked. Okay. Last week, Disney released some, some pretty amazing concept art. And there was uh, a, a lot to talk about when, when it was released. Lots of questions, lots of discussion, lots of debate. And one of the uh, debates that I observed was the, the argument over how literal, how serious should we be taking this concept art? Is, is everything to be taken literally? Or, or all those little Easter eggs and references that we noted in there, uh, should they be taken with a grain of salt? I heard a lot of people saying stuff like, it's just concept art. It's, it's meant to incite you. It's meant to make you feel a certain way, to paint a picture. It's not a blueprint. It's not supposed to be taken literally. Now, I think a little differently. Ian and I kind of got into this a little bit uh, when, we were, when we saw the concept art on Big Thunder Trail, but I, I kind of take it the, up, the opposite way. And the reason why I feel that way is because concept art isn't, isn't designed for us. It's not created for us to incite anything. It's, it's created for, for executives and for decision makers and for planners and artists to, to convey their, 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 their vision to the people who make decisions. There's actually probably dozens and dozens of other pieces of concept art that we've never even seen. So if it's meant for us, then how come we haven't seen all that other concept art? Because it's not for us. It's not... We, we only get what they let us see, and they just, it's just a tease. If it's not for us, and if it's for executives, then, then I believe that we should take things more literally. I believe that everything that we see on, on a piece of concept art, if it's, it, if it's there, then it should be... In the land, in the, in the reality that we're going to be presented later on. Now, I'm saying all this because there was actually one item in the concept art that a lot of people brought up and asked about. And again, Ian and I even discussed this when we went to go see the, the live art down there on Big Thunder Trail. And it was funny because lots, lots of people asked, well, why, why is there a starfighter in the lower left corner? Does that mean we're going to get a starfighter in Star Wars Land? Is he going to fly over Star Wars Land? And then, you know, Ian and I, when we talked about it at Frontierland, we're like, no, come on. No, of course not. There's not going to be a, a starfighter over, over Star Wars land. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I've heard a rumor that there's going to be a starfighter flying overhead Star Wars land. Guys, I've heard a rumor that there's going to be a TIE fighter flying over Star Wars land. Guys, I've heard a rumor that said Starfighter and said TIE Fighter are, are going to be doing battle <laughs> over Star Wars land. Guys, I don't even know if there's anything that I can say that, that could follow that. What do I say to, to, that, that could make you more excited <laughs> about the idea of a space battle occurring in the skies over Star Wars land? A literal space battle. I mean, just imagine, <laughs> just imagine how everything would just stop. Everything would just stop. Over Star or in Star Wars land when this happens, when this is going down. It would just stop. Everything would stop. Now, I, I think this is a good time to observe uh, or notice that when we talk about the, the plans that Disney has for Star Wars land, the big, big plans that they have, and how these plans will shame everything else before it from, from any park, this is what we're talking about. This is the kind of stuff that we're talking about. This is why a reskin of Tomorrowland would never have ever been enough. Never would have been enough. This is why putting Star Wars Land in some corner in DCA would never have been enough. And, and this is why it's taken so long. This is why we've heard, you know, uh, rumors come and go about where they were going to put it. Because they hadn't decided. They hadn't really committed to the full vision. They hadn't committed to the full scope of, of what Star Wars Land could be. And, and now that they finally have, we're starting to hear, we're starting to get an idea of, of just what kind of grandeur we're talking about. And that's and again and this is another example of why it's not just about the rides when you go to Disneyland. It never has been about the rides, really. The rides are secondary. It's about having a full and complete experience, being there. Okay, this is this is we're gonna be there in Star Wars. And as a quick sidebar for those who ask often, and I, I've I've said this more than once in comments in another video, but it bears repeating. This is why I believe Star Tours will never ever ever make its way to Star Wars land. It will never make it there. Star Tours is going to die. You guys, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But Star Tours is going to die. It doesn't, it doesn't meet the level of, of awesomeness that they've got in store. How can you put Star Tours in a land that's going to have a, a, a physical, literal space battle in the sky? <laughs> Star Tours is a simulator. Okay? It's just, it can't get there. It just cannot get there. 
Now let me kind of close with this idea. You may remember uh, a few years ago, uh, St- Walt Disney World. They they did Fantasyland, a new Fantasyland. When they reopened, when they when they when the grand reopening of Star or uh, of of uh, New Fantasyland, there was a dragon. They they put a dragon in the sky and the dragon flew around. All right, if I just remember that because that was three years ago and they did that. You know, there's video of that. You can find that on the internet. And I feel like it's not, it's not a big stretch to think it's going to be something like that, but instead of a dragon, it's a starfighter. As a matter of fact, I'd be willing to bet money uh, that we might be seeing a uh, peach dragon fly over Fantasyland in Disneyland uh, in the near future in preparation for, for the movie coming out. And, and I'd also be willing to bet that, that peach dragon, that if they, do put the, if they do put a dragon out there, and it is peach dragon, I, I'd be willing to bet that that's, that's, a, that's a test. It's a dry run. To, for the, for the Starfighter. It's a dry run to see how well it works and if it does operate, you know, you know, with, with some effectiveness. Which begs the question, actually, and that's the one fear that I have. A, it may not happen because it may not work. Because notice, we don't, we don't have a dragon anymore at Walt Disney World. They only did it for that, that one short little minute. And, and, and two, if, if we do, if it does work, will it, will it be a permanent attraction? Will it be a permanent show? Or will it just be... For the grand opening of Star Wars Land, maybe just for the you know first few nights or the first month or something like that, because I'd have to imagine that's a complicated and an expensive show to do. Can you do that every night? Can you do that? Is it is it as complicated as the fireworks or as expensive as fireworks? Fireworks run like from what I've heard something like thirty thousand dollars a night. So you know, is this they they do that every night? So is it is it a thirty thousand dollar a night show? I don't know. I don't know. I bet you it's more technically difficult to pull off every night than fireworks is. Uh, yeah, so that's where I'm going to leave you all. Uh, but, but think about it. Think about the scope and think about what this means for what we're to expect. What, how excited should we be if we're going to get something like this just, you know, as a... This isn't even like the main part of the land. How good are the rides going to be and the shops and the theming if, if this is part of it? You can't... Can't do a, you can't do a light show, or I mean, you can't do a space battle without having all that other stuff down there on the ground to, to fully bring you in. It's, this is going to be, you guys, this is going to be the most, the most complete experience you can imagine. It's going to be the closest we've ever been to being in Star Wars. So think about that. Think about that, guys. All right? Love you. Fresh bacon stuff. We've got lots more videos for you to see, so grab a churro and check out our Star Wars Land updates from the Knothole Gang or maybe our Secrets and History videos. Or you can just watch all of our weekly trip reports and have your mind blown by how much fun we're having. We truly are the best of Disney Bake Fresh daily. And don't forget, you can support Fresh Bake by joining our Patreon campaign or by buying a Fresh Bake t-shirt. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Fresh Baked!